Hello everyone, Warringer here and welcome to the Cursed Grudgebringers campaign for Warhammer 2. Now I say cursed because this is actually the third time I've tried to record this. The first time I actually lost the campaign fairly early on in the episode. And the second time I went to record it I didn't have the audio set up and so I had no commentary for the entire video which sucked. So take three and fingers crossed this is actually going to work. But anyway, hi guys, how's it going? As you can see, we're going to be starting a new campaign today with the Grudgebringers, led by their commander, Morgan Bernhardt. And this faction was voted for by you, the viewers. And I do have to say, I'm very excited for this campaign. The mechanics of the faction are quite cool, and it does hit that nostalgic feel as well. Growing up as a kid on Shadow of the Horned Rat and Dark Omen, way, way back in 1995, I believe Shadow of the Horned Rat came out, and 98 for Dark Omen. It's very cool to be played as the Grudgebringers, and at some point in the future I do want to actually do those two games as well. So be prepared for outdated graphics, but a very good story and very good games in my opinion. But we're here for Grudgebringers for Warhammer 2, and that's what we're going to be doing. If you're interested in playing this campaign yourself, you can check it out. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice now from speaking so much now. But... If you're interested in playing at home, you can find the mod collection linked in the video description. The two major ones we're using is Steel Faith Overhaul to bring some variety from closer to the tabletop, and OVN's Lost Factions mods, which allow you to play as factions such as the Grudgebringers, as well as a host more. For those of you that follow Surreal Beliefs, this is the faction he uses to play as the Harvelins and the Moots. In fact, you can see them right here and the Blood Dragons that he's currently doing on his channel. So if you're interested, go and check them out. But this is the Morgan Bernhard with his magical sword Grudgebringer. And you can read a bit about the different bits of the faction. That has turned out to be a bit more annoying than I expected it to, but we'll have to work with it. But we also start here in Blight Water. So there's a reason why we actually start off down here. And if I hit Start Campaign, you can read about it here. So this campaign is actually taking place near the end of the Dark Omen campaign as we've already defeated the Black Grail and the Hand of Nagash and so we're heading down now to fight the Dread King. Now the Dread King is not a canon character in terms of the Warhammer lore. He was a character I believe created for Dark Omen and he's basically one of Nagash's lieutenants, very much similar to Ark in the Black. He starts off down in this campaign at the Black Pyramid so we're going to have to make our way down there, get stronger along the way, and defeat him in battle. Now while I'm keeping the loading screen up is because there is a couple things I want to bring up. Firstly is the fact about submitting characters and units, like I've done with my other campaigns. I still want to do that and you can find it pinned in the top comment of this video. I'm not going to repeat it for future videos, but you'll be able to find it down there at all times. But one thing I want to do is that, well, there's two things. One, we are limited by our armies. With this faction, we can only have two armies at most, right? So we're going to be a bit limited in the amount of units we can use anyway. And as a bit of a personal preference, I do want to use the characters and units from Shadow of the Horned Rat and Dark Omen before I use your names. For example, with wizards, we can get our hands on all the different laws because we are an empire faction technically. But for example, I'm going to be working on, for example, getting a bright wizard. We're going to call him Luther Flamestrike after the bright wizard you can use in the two games. If we get an amber wizard, I want to call him Alor after the wizard that you use in Shadow of the Horned Rats. If we get a unit of bowmen, I want to call them the Helmgard bowmen after the ones you get in Dark Omen. Um, all the things like that, just because I think it's quite thematic for us to use those units. And we're also going to be able to get a whole bunch of ones from the games as regiments of renown, which is going to be pretty cool. But that's going to be that bit. The other thing I want to bring up before I shut up talking and we can go straight to the campaign screen is I am going to try and roleplay this campaign a bit. So we do play as a mercenary army and we have the mechanics basically of the Vampire Coast. So we can build up our horde buildings, our camp, we'll be able to, with different buildings and we can have limited options when it comes to occupying settlements. 
So while we will be doing that, we're not going to be trying to establish an empire or anything like that. We're here as a mercenary camp with our own objectives. Sorry, mercenary army with our own goals. So the main focus will be building up the camps and while we will be taking some settlements, there will be reasons for it. For example, we're going to have to go down to the Black Pyramid and the Gash as our main objective at the moment. So that means going into the deserts of Mehekara. Now you can imagine going into the desert unprepared is not a good idea. So I can imagine taking a settlement somewhere on the outskirts of the desert. So we have a headquarters to head into the desert and have friendly territory we can retreat back to, replenish and so on. But we're not going to go and try and establish an empire. That is not the point of this campaign. Now, something that's going to be quite nice as well, and you'll see it in the either the first turn or the second turn, is that we are going to have some quests come up, which will give us a bit of a loose narrative for us to work with. So that will be pretty cool. But that's enough of me actually talking now. We can actually get into the campaign. And it's only taken six minutes, eh? A lot of me just talking with a loading screen. But we've got a mod configuration tool. I'm just going to quickly skip through all of this. So we are going to wait one turn for abandonment, not too fussed about that, and um, sure, that's fine. Well, we'll go for law friendly, so if we defeat Ark in the Black, then Kenbri can't take them, and Setra will not join any other faction because Setra does not follow, he leads. This really doesn't matter for us because we can't recruit any of the characters as far as I'm aware, but you never know, you never know. In fact, I will keep it like that just in case something happens with the Empire you never know we might have Cal France all of a sudden join our army for some reason but finalize that and here we are Commander Morgan Bernhard himself I will marshal so we got a few units already so we got the Grudgebringer Cavalry led by Commander Bernhard and this is quite cool he is a legendary Lord but he actually has a unit rather than just himself so we have 60 men, his stats are representative of that, so our weapon strength is not too powerful. But I think it's just cool that we actually got a legendary unit, essentially. But we've got Commander Mer Morgan Bernhardt, we've got some Imperial Foot, that is going to need a name. We've got the Grudgebringer Infantry, led by their officer, Sergeant Gunther Svecht. And we've actually got the Shield of Patalos and Hellfire Sword, which is going to be pretty cool, because when you see them on the campaign, on the battle map, I mean, he will actually be armed with those weapons himself. That's going to be pretty cool. We've got Flagellants. We've got the Grudgebringer Crossbows, led by Wilhelm Fletcher. And we've got the Grudgebringer Cannon, led by Wolfgang Schwarzkopf. Very, very cool. Now, I'm going to change the name of the Flagellants here, because there is a unit of Flagellants you can get in Dark Omen, led by a priest called Eusebio. I've got a bunch of their names missing down here. The Bleaks. I'm going to call them the Lost. I can't fit Faithful into the thing, okay? But there we go. You said the Bleaks last. Now, what are we going to do? Well, our first objective is actually going to require us to come over towards here. And we do have another objective that's going to pop up, which will allow us to recruit a ranger down here. But for now, I kind of want to stick around here, build up our strength before we go into the deserts of Mehekara. We need to recruit more units. I would like to try and get maybe a second army even before we do that. So our first priority, I think, will be going after some of the orcs over here from the Red Fang tribe. But I would like to at least try and get my hands on the ranger that we'll be able to pick up. So we'll start making our way down south. Then we'll head back up north, go after Death Gorge and basically work our way up. I don't want to go after Serpent's Fang. That's why I lost the first time I played this. Because I end up fighting a tribe called the Wattblood tribe. They were extremely powerful considering that's just a little settlement of theirs. But let's just start marching you down here already. We're going to have a fair bit of gold to play with because we're not going to be able to do a lot of recruitment. Although, if I actually pop on here we can get our hands on some pistoliers straight away. And if we pop onto here... Next turn, we'll be able to get our hands on a unit of Dwarf Warriors. But for now, we do have things eventually like Ragnar's Wolves, Galad's Elf Archers, Ublab Watguts, Mercenary Ogres, and a tree man called Nalfist. And we'll be able to recruit more as time goes on as well, so that's going to be pretty cool. Now, Commander Bernhard himself has got an interest in uh, skill tree. We've got Masterful Tactics, where we can unlock a level 10, giving us loads of bonuses against different factions. 
We've got the ability to increase our uh, unit by quite a large amount as time goes on, including getting kill and blow at the end. We have stuff in like improved regiment command, Shadow of the Horned Rat ability, giving us bonuses against Green Skin and Skaven, and Dark Omen when it comes to fighting the vampire counts. We also got all different magical items we can unlock, starting off first of all with the Grudgebringer Sword itself, and then eventually things like the Enchanted Shield and stuff, and this will all affect the unit rather than just him, so that's going to be pretty cool. But for now, I've got four points, so I'm going to go Root Marcher first of all, and the first one I want to get, given that we're going to be going into a lot of territory with attrition, is reassuring presence. So I'm going to level this up as much as possible, because not only does it reduce my casualties by 15%, but also gives me, as you can see, casualty replenishment. So that's going to really help us out. In fact, we're barely taking any losses now from walking through the wasteland. Now, we've got some research to do, and I feel like I'm saying this because this is like the third time I've already had to do all this. But we're going to go Clonal Fort for Casualty Replenishment and Public Order. These ones we're not going to work on too much, simply because we're not really planning to have much in the way of settlements. But we are going to work quite a bit on our military tech trees, so we can improve our troops, our war machines, and things like that. But for now, extra Casualty Replenishment is going to be very handy. So we're going to go for that. And really, it's just a case of keep marching down here for a couple of turns. Oh yeah, well I remember as well, diplomacy this time. So we, as you can see, we have no enemies right now, but we are military allies with Reichland, so we are going to be seeing a lot of what's happening up in the Empire as well. I think it's pretty cool. It allows us to at least keep track of what's going on back home. And it does represent the fact that Cal France is actually our employer. So another bit of sort of um, role playing I want to do is if we do have any missions that pop up, like declare war on this faction or what have you, I do want to try and do it because I think that's just thematic. We are employed by Reichland and I can presume that it's Cal Fans sending messages to us to do these missions. And if he's paying us, then the least we can do is do what he asks, can't we? But anyway, let's skip through the end turn phase and I'll see you guys in a sec. And here we are with our first quest. Defeat the Fallen Lord in battle, the Dread King. Now the Dread King wishes to usher in a Age of Terror. The forces of good falter, so it is we who must stop him at all costs. So, as already mentioned, he's already down here at the Black Pyramid. So that is our first objective, and our main objective, I should say. And we've now got this mission as well. We've got 48 turns to do it, so that's why I'm going to be hanging around here for a bit before we do. But we have been asked to go after Morkheim in order to try and rescue the kinsman of an old friend of ours, Asgard's Bloodfist. So if we, uh, you can read a bit about the description there, but it does mean because we picked that up, if we go on to here and here, we can now pick up Asgard's Bloodfist Dwarf Warriors. Now what's quite cool is that the cards are actually from the Shadow of the Horned Rat and Dark Omen as well pretty much, like this one here for Asgard's, I believe does come up in Dark Omen, but I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've actually played the two games, but I'm just looking forward to playing them at some point. Oh yeah, I forgot. Pistoliers. I need to change the name for these guys. I've got their name written down here as well. They're going to be known as Vice's Outlaws. To represent a outlaw pistolier unit, you can get in Dark Omen, led by their sort of captain, I guess you can say, Stephen Vice. So... We're going to continue heading down here because, as I said, there is a reason why we want to do this. And something else can be quite cool because of OVN's Lost Factions is, look at these. So we've got the Servants of Femenaeod, which are a Femir-based faction, I believe. And we've got Arabs. We've got the Araby is actually around now in the map. Now, unfortunately, that's something I need to contact the mod, uh, mod creator about. Because he has made a slight error, I think, with how he's done the mission objectives for Mortal Empires compared to the Vortex campaign. But I'll talk about that when we actually get down there. Okay, capacity system. How do we want to play this thanks to the cap system? Now, to be honest, in my previous campaigns, as you guys know, we do have army caps because I liked uh, that mechanic. I don't know if I want to try... For a bit of variety, I'm going to try faction-wide caps only. 
is recommended and it would be a bit of a change from what I usually use in Close to the Tabletop. So we'll quite happily do that. And we did have another mission given to us, moving a character down towards the Carnal Valley. As Guzmay mentioned that before his kin's capture, they were tracking an elf along the southern World Age Mountains. Their crime was killing a troll earmarked by a slayer, and for that a grudge is written in the Damas Kwan. We should track down this elf and see what they know, for they are far from home and their intent unknown. So we are making our way down here in order to contact this elf. And for those of you who've played Shadow of the Horned Rat, you will recognise him when he pops up. Ta-da! Right. Yeah, we picked up now an Imperial Troop, Keradan, Keradan, the Lone Ranger. Now the elf is no other than the Ranger Keradan. He told us of the Arabian city of Kasabar, a place tainted with evil, but it was not always so. It holds powerful magic that must not fall into the Dread King's hands, and his heart is lightened that you should share this burden with him. So we do have 29 turns to actually try and reach the settlement of Kasabar down here. Now the problem is... It actually belongs to these guys, the Azrad Scythians, and we can't actually declare war on these guys. I believe technically they count as the Southern Realms, and as you saw on the faction selection screen, we can't actually declare war on the Empire, or Imperial factions, Bretonian factions, Dwarven factions, and it seems the Southern Realms. So until an enemy actually takes Kasabar in the next 20 odd turns, we can't actually carry on with that quest chain, which kind of sucks, and that's why I think I need to contact the mod creator about it. But apart from that, I have to say I'm very impressed with the work that the creators have done for OVN's Lost Factions. Very, very cool. Right, but here we are again. Beastman Rising. Yes, we're going to allow evasions to happen early on. And I'm just going to... Highlight, we're going to pop down this way, just so I can show what I'm talking about. In fact, if we switch back over to... Can I switch back? No, I can't. My Continue down. Ah, oh, hello. Who are you? Oh, the Crusher from the Trolls. Okay, cool. Right, at this point, though, I do think it's best if I just start making my way back up north to fight the Red Fangs. It gave us something to do and an opportunity for us to expand the army and become more powerful before we start heading into Nehekara properly. So, we'll start making our way up north, I think, at this point. Okay, so, what's going to be our choice about the Imperial Peace? Now, in the Tao Sing campaign I'm running, we've decided that the rumours are true and that they are united, so they're not going to attack each other, which has led to some interesting developments in the world. I believe Norska, for example, at, this po at that point in the campaign has actually been wiped out, taken over by the Empire and Petonia. And basically we're seeing them go everywhere, which is quite interesting. But for now I'm going to say the rumours are false. I'm interested to see what happens up north as time goes on. For now I'm going to switch back to normal starts because we do want to start resting up and getting some replenishment. But here's my problem, right? Casa Bar is owned by the Aswild Sophians, right? If I click on them, I have no option to declare war on them. So unless a faction comes in, takes it for themselves, and then we can go in and take it from them, maybe like the Netcock Brotherhood, there's nothing we can do about it. So, we're going to be making our way up north instead. Now I'm going to continue force marching because we don't have the population surplus to do any new buildings until the following turn. So while I wait for our replenishment then to happen before we go after Death Gorge, I might as well take the opportunity then to start building up our settlement. Okay, so we've managed to get our first bit of research done, the colonial fort. We've got stability, which really doesn't matter to us. But we are able to continue. So let's go back to this. We want... Oh, uh, hang on. We might as well just go the full whack, shouldn't we? So, let's go continue marching up north. Make our way in towards Death Gorge. We'll be able to see then if they've got any armies near here. And keep an eye on the garrison itself. So, let's see what they've got. Oh, pretty easy garrison. We should be able to take them out fairly easy with what we've got. But we will want to get some replenishment done before we do that. So, let's just do it to new research. We're going to go this time for state troop standards, increase our infantry units. And really, that's about it. 
these turns are going to go very, very quickly. Simply because we're only going to be able to have two unit, two armies at most. So, it's just basically move an army, end turn phase. End an arm, move an army, end turn phase. Is basically how we're going to end up doing a lot of this. Tell me though, if, what would you like? Because I would like to try and edit the videos a bit more, especially as I've got more time now. So, if you guys want me just to focus on... Spe you know, big occasions, like, for example, when we're about to attack the Red Fangs rather than just moving up there and doing stuff like that, then please let me know in the comments. Now, this is something that's going to happen a lot. Because we're not spending much of our money right now, our money is going up quite a bit, and I want to do that because between our faction mechanics and being the lead of the Grudge Burgers, we have got a massive amount of upkeep to deal with. So, for example, if I click on here, the Grudgebringer mercenaries, as you can see, have good diplomatic relations with lots of factions, but all my units are going to cost 30% more for upkeep. Not only that, but if I go on to Bernhardt's and pick his skill, we've got mercenary heroes, which again, really makes our army strong, but again, 20% extra upkeep, so his entire army altogether costs me 50% more for upkeep than it would do for the usual. So we are really trying to balance our money out a bit as we do this. But now we're in range of Death Gorge. I want to take a turn to, to to replenish. I'll build up the camp as we go as well. So we could go for Press Gown Wagon, get our hands on Pikemen and Free Company Militia. We can go here as well for Scouts Post. Oh, I might as well show you guys. I forgot. I've done this twice already. But we can go for a Press Gown Wagon and work our way up. So we can get our hands on Pikemen and Free Company Militia. Eventually, Pistoliers, and then an Empire Captain, Harvey Rangers, and Ogres. We get a Wizard's Card to get our hands on Wizards and improve abilities as we go up. We also got a Sigma Altar, which will allow me to get Warrior Priests, Witch Hunters, and Flagellants, and increase our leadership quite nicely. We got the Scout's Post that will give me extra Horde Growth, which is the build I'm going to go for first. But, in fact, hang on. But as he goes up now, we get the Hunter's Lodge. Extra casualty replenishment is quite nice. It gives me campaign movement at the top, and we get access to Huntsmen and Empire Archers as we go along. And finally, for finance, we've got Paymaster Wagon. That's going to be quite useful to get with the upkeep reduction, and we get a bit of extra com money coming in from the Quest Keeper Wagon. So, for now though, we're going to go Scout's Post, because then this will allow me to build up the Horde quite more quickly. But we're going to wait two turns while we wait for this to replenish. We can't recruit any... F oh, hang on. We can, actually. Caradan the Lone Ranger. We're going to grab you. Can't recruit anything else right now. So, I'll see you guys when we're about to attack Death Gorge. Okay, then, guys. Here we are, ready to start the fight against the Red Fangs here at Death Gorge. Now, the Red Fangs are going to have a rough time now, because if I pop onto the War Declared, not only are we about to declare war on them, but the Aswad Symphians are as well as Karak Azor. Now, I'm not planning to actually stay around for long up here. I'm quite happy just to take certain territories, burn them down, and get the money. So for now, though, we're fully replenished. We've got Karadan joined us. Yes, a sound plan. I should hope so. Let's start the attack. Declare war. We can bring Reikland into this, but I'm not going to, because they're all the way up in the Empire. There's no point them really joining us. Oh, hang on. Vampiric influence. Oh wow, in that case, it's definitely a good idea for us to go after these guys. I Meanwhile, we're fighting the undead, and if we've got a faction easily manipulated by them, then we want to eliminate them. Now, we're going up against Raz Humper Rad here. What a name. But that's going to be a pretty easy fight. We could auto resolve this, but in the interest of actually getting a fight in the first episode and to showcase how some of the units look, we're going to fight this. So, see you guys on the battlefield. Okay, then, here we are. So we don't know where the garrison is yet, apart from they're going to be somewhere over here. And looking at our position, I do feel a little tempted to take a position on top of the hill here. But with this big hill in the way as well, it means we're going to be very limited in our fire arcs. So, a table. We're just going to stick right here, basically. So if we get a good front line going, so we're going to move the flagellants over here. We'll get you guys in the centre. Do something like that. Uh, yeah, you are fighting, facing the right way. That's a good start. We're going to put the cannon right over here next to the infantry. We'll put my crossbows then over here. 
ready to fire forward. Use the Beoza Bleak's last can go behind them, ready to charge forward. And we'll put Commander Bernhard on this flank. And we're going to get Vice's Outlaws. To basically just kite away a couple of units, make it a bit easy for us. Not that I really need to worry, our men are extremely good at what they do. But still, might as well do the job. Now before we actually start the fight though, let me just showcase some of my units. Because at the attention to detail that they've done, the mod creator, is really, really good. Now these are the Reichland, the Imperial Foot, our Reich's Guard on foot. But next to them here is the Grudgebringer Infantry. Same shields they would have in the base in Shadowhorn Rats. And here is Lieutenant Specht. You can see he's got the Hellfire Sword in his hand. And Christ, they're shouting loudly. But the shield of the Talos is next to them too. Very, very cool. Over here now we've got Keradon, our Lone Ranger. Very cool in his high elf armor. Asgur's Blood Fist is Dwarf Warriors. Including Asgur's himself here. Looking much more fancy compared to his fellow kinsmen. And the fact that he's got his runic weapon. Very, very cool. We've got the Grudgebringer Cannon. It is just one cannon because it is in Dark Omen. But you can see back here, there he is, Wolfgang Schwarzkopf, looking very cool with his eye patch. We've then got our Grudgebringer crossbows. In fact, you can see here Wilhelm Fletcher, the only guy without a helmet. And so here, the last is back here. I'm going to pretend this guy, one of these guys, is going to have to be our priest, but I can't spot him. And then finally, the Quim the, Del Quim, the Grudgebringer cavalry. With Commander Morgan Bernhard himself on the front. Grudge bringer in hand. His shield as always. And the fact they've got their own shields. The mod creator's done a fantastic job. Rebuilding these guys for Warhammer 2. Very very cool. But let's go and kill us some green skins. So let's get Vice and his outlaws to run around the flank. I'm just going to take some early shots here. I don't expect them to do a lot of damage. But any kills we can get right now is going to be useful. And we are on skirmish, so if he starts pulling away a few units, it's going to help us out. Now you guys need to be ready to start firing for me. When you're ready though, men. Don't rush. Take your time. Are you firing? There we go. Just takes a while to actually fire, it seems. But there we go. One hit, one into the goblins. In fact, did they not have some big guns? Ah, here they are, yeah. Go after Raz Humper. There we go, we're doing some damage already to their orc boys and the goblins with the outlaws. They're starting to get fired upon by the archers, but that's fine. It's splitting them up, which is what I wanted. Now, let's see, if we go back onto you, we do have Pepper Pot. So, explosive rounds and strong against multiple targets. Not quite within range yet, but they will be in just a second. And I want them to really fire on these guys, if at all possible. Oh crap, you guys are really taking some damage. Get out of there. I didn't realise both archer units are now firing on their position. Ugh. Right. Fire on the goblins. And that might potentially even hit them too. But you guys can now pull back. In fact, we'll pull you back down here for now. Right. There's the explosive rounds. Straight into both of those units. Fantastic. Right, let's start the offensive. You guys start firing in, you guys charge forward. You guys, Keradon, you come in and attack the goblins. You come over here and attack these. You can come here, you come here. Right, let's have you fire on that position here. And then grudge bringers, you're going to do what you do best. Right, first of all, let's go and kill off some of these archers. The fact that we're running behind the enemy's line with our units is going to make them morale break extremely easy. So, in fact, we've already got one unit that's about to waver. Let's get them going. There we go. Right, let's bring you guys around here now. Attack these archers for me. We've already got another unit broken over here. Used to be other bleak has done an extremely good job there. Let's bring you around here now to go and fight these. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah, you guys have done an extremely good job against these. Go and chase down their leader. Oh, wow. That was a big thing. <laughs> a flank shot there. Right. Let's get you guys to come over and start chasing these guys down. 
We want you now to start breaking their troops as much as possible. Alright, you come over here and find me some archers, please. Okay, Orc boys, about to go. Let's swap out the crossbows now to start firing on the archers. And I think we've now got this in the bag. Alright. Bernhardt, go and chase down these last unit of archers for me. You guys turn around and take out these. Okay, cannon, start firing on these. You can chase down these. Crossbowmen, take these out. Nice. The big guns are now pretty much on the run. We just got one more unit, I believe, and let's follow them in with the attack. Look at those goblins, they're trying to run away. But the grudge bringers will not let them run. Devs stay in charge right into their lines. It's a shame it they look much more effective than the actually is. Like you saw all of these goblins just go flying meters away. And then all of a sudden they just sort of stand there up again and start pulling out the swords to attack. But that was a very devastating charge. You can see bodies on the floor already. I'm just going to be able to chase down the survivors if we want it. But this is a settlement. Excuse me. This is a settlement attack, so we can just end the battle straight away. Decisive victory, as expected. And let's go back to the campaign map and decide what we're going to be doing with Death Gorge. So, one decisive victory later. Unfortunately, no level ups for our Imperial Furts or our Flagellants or our. Uh, uh, bleh, can't talk right now. Our Outlaw Pistoliers, which is annoying given how many kills they managed to get. But. We've managed to take the place, and now we can decide what to do with it. Now, we can transfer to the Empire for a flat bonus of 1,200, and I believe it does give me reinforcements as well. So we'll be able to get some extra units, very much similar to the Hunt's Marshall expedition in the Vortex map. But of other options, to be honest, I kind of feel tempted to occupy it. Just to showcase the other options we can do, because we do have the Abandoned Regions mod, which I felt was quite fitting. So, if we take it, I can showcase now that we can get a few things, like building guardhouses and that will allow me to get spearmen and swordsmen, which are pretty cool. Pit Fighters. Okay, was not expecting that when I went up. We also got a Night Watch, or from here we can get a Barber Surgeon, increasing growth and income. We can get a tap room as well to give me hands on some free company militia, crossbows, and the like. And again, eventually get ogres and halfling rangers. But, to be honest, we don't really need to keep the settlements. And Chaos Corruption is going up, and because, slight spoiler, the Wat Blood Fang is over here in Serpent's Fang. So the Wat Blood Tribe is over in Serpent's Fang, which is why this Chaos... Corruption coming up, and why I don't particularly want to be sticking around the area for too long. But we'll be able to get a bit of replenishment where we need it. We'll continue again some extra growth, and we can level up Bernhardt again. So what do I want to go for this time? Well, given that we're quite limited in our options for armies, we can only get two armies at once. I kind of want to work my way up towards Lightning Strike as soon as possible, because then we'll be able to have the advantage then when we have multiple armies against us. To be able to just charge in and to eliminate them one by one. So for now, which one's better? Uh, Commander Bernhard was never really a religious man. So I'm not going to bother with that. Iron Displarian will be useful. But at the same time, it's not going to be useful for us. Because we're not going to have much territory. So I'm thinking Rary is going to be the best one. Campaign line of sight and ambush defense will be eventually very good. And this one is really going to help us out in particular. Up minus 8% upkeep for all units in his army. Extra campaign range. We'll take it. And that's going to actually help us out a bit. And we'll get some extra money coming in. Now, Death Gorge we don't want to keep. So we're just going to go ahead and abandon it. Uh, hang on. Oh, there we go. I believe I got it so it takes a turn, didn't I? So, really, that's it. Oh, hang on. I forgot to show this mission off. So, as you can see here, we've got to, an objective as well to capture Zandri over here along the coast. 
So, in Almighty Sandstorm, the Kamish Kami and the Wizards has disappeared. And our best scouts were able to find a gaggle of nomadic fishermen off the Gulf of Suvaga, who said men in bright garbs were forced into a decrepit barge affixed with a skeleton figurehead whose eyes glowed red. They told us the fleet ship was bound for the fleet port of Terra. So, we definitely want to make our way over here at some point, but we've got quite a few turns. The Fountain of Light I'm not going to bother doing, but everything else will just level up a bit over here, and then we'll make our way over towards Morkheim over here in the distance, occupy it, get back Asgard's kinsmen, and then we'll make our way down towards Zandri. So, so that's what we're going to do for now. We'll hit the intern, and get a bit of rest before we start heading up then towards Karag Asgard. I think that would be a good target for us to go after next. Okay, so we've got news that the Teeth Snatchers have been destroyed, as well as the Arachnos, and Death Gorge is still under our control. Hang on, let me abandon settlements. There we go, I must have clicked it off before. But, here I'm going to leave it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for the next episode, I'm going to move my way up towards Karak Asgar, so we're in a position then to attack it in the next episode straight off the bat, rather than then sit around and watch as I slowly make my way up north. So... In the meantime, though, thank you very much for watching today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed, and I do hope you join me next time for some more Warhammer. But until then, everyone, take care, especially in, these day in this day and age, and goodbye for now.